Well, good afternoon everybody. I hope your lunch has descended appropriately. And as uh, Tim states, I'll try and keep the level of energy and hopefully enjoyment as well. Um, this is very relevant, really, to the whole auspice of the ISSR, the thermal mapping of patient spaces and journeys in uh, Derriford Hospital, mostly because it's all about solutions, or potential solutions, or solutions, hopefully, that we're going to get from this piece of work. Um, I need a little bit of storytelling before it starts, and I honestly won't overrun, Kirsty. We were asked via Paul Hardman to look at the thermal comfort and the thermal core temperatures of patients in Derriford Hospital, uh, Sharp Ward, which is up on the 11th floor of the main block in Derriford Hospital. Uh, one of the main consultant surgeons, James Metcalf, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Moore, um, and also uh, senior houseman uh, Matthew Boyd, all wished us to have a look at this issue. And let me just quickly explain the issue. The issue is, and you'll have to bear in mind that I'm a building scientist, I am not, repeat, not a clinician, that if a patient gets to an operating theatre and their core temperature is below 36.5, the operation cannot take place. This is due to various elements to do with mortality, actually on the theatre table, but also, just straight, the NHS will not allow it. So there is a cost and a sustainability-related element to this. We are not getting people through our hospitals. And that means that less operations are being done. That means the waiting lists are longer, etc., etc. So, quite a complex little bringerine, if you like, into this particular element. Let's just hope that comes down. So... This is an ongoing project, but the project plan is a very basic one and a very familiar one to any academic that looks at any piece of research. We discuss with clinicians what the issue is. We look at the lit. We have a look at the long-term monitoring, the hygrothermal monitoring of the different wards, because that's one of the hypotheses we think is going to have an impact upon the patient core temperature. Then we have two aspects that then dig deeper. One, short bursts of logging at specific places that we've identified, thermographic imaging, and then finally the consideration of some actions. What can we do? Well, where are we at the moment? Well, we're just finishing above where the consideration of actions is. That's where we've got to. So this actually hasn't finished. It's got another, probably another heating season's worth of work to be done for us to be sure what those particular actions are going to be. Now, you may have seen, as far as if anybody's looking at and saying what's thermographic imaging, you may have seen our stand, the Environmental Building Group, which is actually up uh, on the floor of Cross Point up there. And anybody who wishes to go and have a chat with any of the people up there, I'm sure you've already done it. How many people have seen it? Lots of people? Oh, great, great. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Great. Now, you will also probably see that the thermographic imaging is also used over in the psychology uh, side of the research over the other side of cross point opposite our stand and there's a couple of research posters in there which you're looking at so results what are the results of the longer term monitoring the first thing we wanted to find out was okay is the space cold I mean, this is, sounds like a, a blatantly easy and silly sort of suggestion but unless you find out whether this is true or not you, you've got no position to try and make any further judgments. So what we did was we monitored one of the wards with, with the help of um, the nurses of uh, making available a lot of the monitoring equipment so that we could actually physically plug in and get down, downloaded information. And what you can see up there is a graph which shows four months' worth of monitoring which runs from September through to December. And as you can see, there's a gradual drop. I mean, if... If I was to say, well, that, that's a drop there, you probably agree, roughly. But you will see the overwhelming majority of the readings are around 23 degrees Celsius. Maybe 22-ish 20, in around this region. As you know from your own thermostats at home, you wouldn't see that as an inappropriate temperature to keep patients in. That's fine. So that's a bit puzzling. 
Why are there patients going through to operating theatres that have got low core temperatures? It's a bit of an issue then. What else can we look at? Well, this is air temperature. So as far as the building services crew at the hospital are concerned, everything's fine. Air temperature is good. What's the problem? Well, in fact, what we did is we took a trolley, basically full of sensors, that was allegedly a person. And we're taking this person, and this person, we took it through the, the patient journey from where the ward was, right the way along the corridors, down the lift, down to the operating theatre, into the operating theatre, and back out again. And what we did this time is we also looked at radiant temperatures. We used these little things called globe thermometers. And you can see here, this blue line is the globe thermometer, which is actually radiant temperature. And that starts off at a rather jaw-dropping 10. Now, this has been smooth. This data is smooth. It's, it's a, lot, a lot more spiky. It's much easier to see this way. So we start off at 10 degrees, but the air temperature is still up at 23. Ha-ha! We think we found the problem. And as you can see, there's a lumps and bumps up here. This is where we actually got Matt Boyd, bless him, in, in full scrubs, to take the trolley through to the operating theatre and then out through recovery and back out the other side, which had some raised eyebrows from a lot of people with him wheeling this thing through. So we've got a full patient journey. You could say, is that a representative patient journey? Maybe, maybe not. But it is a patient journey. But this, the problem is, is that's a general reading. 10 degrees, why? Why is it giving us 10 degrees? Well, this is where our thermographic experiences came in. We then further, at the same time, took the thermographic camera and we tried to pinpoint with the camera the radiative temperatures. And in this instance, you can see that here's a scale of temperatures over to the right-hand side. 32, that's because we're getting people actually in there, but we're also getting this window. And there, there's the answer. That's why the globe thermometer was take, picking up these very cold temperatures. What we're doing is we're placing patients just about to go to operations next to cold windows. A very easy and simple thing. And you might say, hell, Steve, you can work that out without a whole load of science. But it wasn't being worked out with a load of science. And in fact, was it an off chance? Well, no. Because we went around and blow me, it's the same. Look. 32 in around, oh, we've got a person just over there. Ethics allows us to, to give thermal images because you can't tell who people are, so we're all right with that. 12.8 degrees over there. And further in, average radiant temperatures over there, you can see 22. Now, if you just bear with me just a second, we then got to try and put actions together to be able to now impact upon the nursing staff and also the consultants to say where are you going to place patients before they physically go down to theatre? Simply and sustainably, how can you actually up the <coughs> thermal comfort of people? Well, one of the things we're playing with is this, and playing with in a good way, as far as an impactful method possibly of trying to be able to communicate to nursing staff whereabouts in the ward we can actually place patients. And that's me done. Thank you very much.